In this video, we're going to be looking at sail drive hubs belonging to Brunton's propellers, explaining why they're needed, how they work, and how to take care of them. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, Brunton's sail drive hubs and sail drive propellers, but they're equally applicable to uh, various other types. Um, the general internal mechanisms is something that's dictated by the sail drive manufacturers, not the propeller manufacturers. So there's a little bit of a commonality there. Um, but we're going to be looking mainly at the Verifold, which is here, and I have an Autoprop hub here. And I, I get a lot of questions saying, well, if you can see the differences here, why is this hub different to this hub when we're on the boat show stand or something like that? And th there's a lot of reasons for it, and we're just going to delve into some of them. Um, inside here is uh, a rubber system, so it does need some maintenance, which people tend to forget about. So we're just going to try and clear the water and uh, give you some inside information on inside the hubs. Now, the purpose of the sail drive hub is very, very simply, is to remove the shaft line. If you think about a uh, traditional engine, comes up from the engine through the transmission, long propeller shaft through a stuffing box and then to the propeller. That's worked well for centuries and once we start to get modern materials you can start to play with things and if you think about an outboard where you have the engine above comes down through a shaft through a bevel box and out to the end to the propeller it, it's a similar kind of system to this. The sail drives on sailboats don't tend to, to yaw so you can't steer them they normally have a rudder behind them so they're normally fixed in place but the, the layout and the concept is, is very applicable. And the nice thing about them is it, it changes where you can lay out the boats. If you think of a naval architect, um, we, we're very keen on you know placing the weights and keeping the ballast down and all that sort of stuff. If you've got a fixed engine that has to have a seven degree shaft angle down to a propeller, that pretty much dictates the layout of the boat. If you can have a sail drive where everything's nice and compact and above it, you get a lot more flexibility because you don't have the shaft line to run through. So this is one of the nice things about the sail drive. Um, so the benefits of the sail drive, there isn't really that much in terms of efficiency losing the shaft and then going to a sail drive because you introduce separate gearing systems. I mean, more shafts and transmission systems, 98, 99% efficiency. You know, there is some, some losses in the transmission, but that's not really um, the purpose of this. The nice thing about it is it's very, very simple. Um, they're very, very easy to uh, take the propellers off because it's on a spline rather than a keyway and a taper. Um, and then the, one of the other benefits is, uh, and this is kind of a hidden one, is the prop walk is reduced. Um, prop walk, uh, which we'll do in another video, is a, is a function of shaft angle in a lot of cases and also the hull. So sail drives are normally a 90 degree leg, so the prop's normally pointing forward. So you're not getting this, um, this cylindrical system where the, the wake collapses in on itself and, and gets it a, a side force and it creates like a paddle wheel going forward. So typically owners with sail drives say that they, they don't experience much prop walk. So it's a nice little system. The big, big, big thing that the uh, propellers uh, have to comply with, and this is um, not something, as I said, that we uh, push, is the um, inside the hub here, there's a damping mechanism. Now, with a shaft, if you hit something, it'll come up and chances are it'll hurt the mounts. Uh, everything else is pretty robust in the shaft line. With the sail drive, it's not quite the same. Um, the sail drive will be mounted like so. Uh, it'll come through. There'll be a bevel box here, a fine tooth mesh gear system that comes up and then through another one and then into the transmission. So it's like a, like a Z sort of system. And what the manufacturers found quite early on is if you hit anything, and it is a possibility in the ocean, um, as it strikes the blade, Obviously, the, the engine won't be um, moving at the same speed as the strike, so you get a bit of slippage on the gears and you can strip teeth. So to overcome this, um, they use inside here, um, there's various systems, which we'll go into next, um, of rubber to suppress the um, shock loads. It's a little bit agricultural system, but it works tremendously well. And I have three systems here which we'll run through. And again, these are unique to Brunton's propellers, they're the propellers that I sell. But the, there is some similarities if you have the various other manufacturers, which will not be named. Um, so let's just have a look at it then. So if you can see on the bottom, 
again, the difference is in the hubs. Um, this is obviously an odd prop with the blades off, but you can see it's a, a very, very different way of uh, mounting the hubs. Let me see that on camera there. So this one here is, is on a shaft. Uh, the propeller goes onto a taper, and it's actually the taper that drives. It's not the key that drives. Um, keeps it tight on the taper. It's locked up, and this one works. This one here has teeth inside, and it sits on the spline, so it's much easier to take on, much easier to take off. Um, just a very, very, just a different way of doing it. So, the first system, which I've seen here, and this is off an autoprop. I've just had the blades off. This is actually just a scrap hub. Um, this system here, again, if you can see this on the camera, there's splines inside here. Now, the first one, um, this would be placed inside the hub, and there's a, a polymer um, rubber system, I'm not quite sure the specifics, um, is poured and cast in place. So you can't physically take it out and service it. And the idea was, this is just a cylinder, as you can see there. Um, this um, sits inside here, it's poured in, casts, and it bonds, it makes a permanent bond. And it worked remarkably well. And this is, I think, 20 years old, 10 years old. So it's a really old hub. What happens is that it starts to fail, is the bond breaks, and obviously there's a torque load going in on the spline here. Um, and then as the bond breaks, this will spin, because there's no, um, just because just it's a cylindrical shape, this will spin, and it starts to melt the rubber, and then you lose drive as it starts to fail. And then once you slow down, it'll set again in the cold water, and it goes, and that's how it would, would fail. So there was a, you know, this, it worked well while it was <laughs> from the beginning, but then there was a, an updated system where you start to get some mechanical connection. And this is actually this one here, which is the same as this one. So it looks like this on the back. You see that on camera? There's no fastenings. And the way it works is there's a groove on the side of the cylinder here. And we have this big circlip that you would put it all together inside. And you can see again, there's uh, the scallops in there. This will all fit in. I won't do it properly now, but you can get the idea. And once it drops down to a certain point, once this metal meets this one, uh, the circlip goes over and there's a, there's a similar slot inside the hub. You push it all together in a press, this clicks in place and then it's, it's done. It, it's brilliantly. And there's a lot of these in service now. You may, if you're watching this video, you may have one of these in service. Um, the disadvantage of them is the marine environment. Um, as you can see, there's some sh shell fouling on here. Um, this is a rubber dowel system, and it's not sealed, so there's no the water can get inside. And obviously, being rubber over 10, 15 years, started to degrade. So when you try and service them, um, and I have done a few, it's, it's, been, it's been quite interesting. Um, you need to do something like this. Now, this is a this is called Zytel. This is this was for the sail drives below 40 horsepower. It's exactly the same, it's just a lower horsepower, so we use a, just a, it's effectively a form of plastic. And you can see on this camera, swap that there. You can see what I've done here is I had to drill out on the drill press and then find where the circlip was inside and then get the circlip pliers, squeeze it, and then using the press, push it out. So it's, it's a little bit complicated to, um, to get this apart. And then obviously the hit and miss part is finding um, the two parts of the circlip. And this one, I actually just found it purely by accident for this video. Um, and as you can see, you have to destroy this. And then you can replace this part, you can get the new dowels and get the new clip, and it all goes back together. Unfortunately, now Brunton's have stopped, um, they haven't manufactured these for a very long time, so these are now obsolete, so you can't actually get these anymore. Um, and you can see from the interior that uh, you've got these flutes on the inside, and these dowels sit on here, and there's scallops on here. And as the, as the torsional load comes in, it's absorbed by the dowels. And, you know, it's not going to spin like the first ones. But you couldn't service it very well. So the modern design, which is the current one, put that out of the way, is this one. And you can see it's got a little bit smaller. And this one is for autoprop and for varifold. The, the other before they were specific to the to the product line. And this one uses these little elastomers. It's just this part like this with the very specific um, mechanical properties. And you can see 
there's a triangle of three and then on the other side we have uh, three spaces and you, the the, uh, the little dowels sit in between in the little bays four per bay and they have a mechanical squish in the torsional direction so they, it's not like the first one where it can just spin so and then this all comes I'll take it off you can see it's just got three fins on it like that sits inside and then you know as the torque load comes in and the added benefit for this one and there's a bearing in the bottom you can just see the gray bearing on here so it is actually watertight this one so it actually helps prevent protect the elastomer this one sits in with these are quite a hefty press to put it all back together there's three bolts and then it all locks together beautiful you can get these serviced so it's come a, it's come a long way the technology is very very um, the problem it solves hasn't changed but how they've gone about solving this is really is really improved and this is now a very very robust system um, you can swap these obviously if you change sail drive manufacturers or whatever you know the Yanmar and the Volvo splines are ever so slightly different uh, so you can actually swap parts out and it, it just makes things a lot easier and a lot more efficient for both the customer and for the factory um, so and then finally um, so we've covered um, the main types of say, the um, sail drive hub. Finally, uh, maintenance-wise, uh, obviously, as a, a distributor in the US, we, we do a lot of um, repair work. And previously, you know, the, the older system, I have sold this to shipyards, but it was a very s involved job. The hubs were uh, quite expensive to replace, um, but people did do them. Um, the parts are now out of stock and they're not making any more. You know, it's, 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 it's an obsolete part. So, really, one of the purposes of doing this video was to, just to give you some advice on how to look after your sail drives. Because if the O-ring fails, you'll, um, what will happen is the, the nut will be on this side, and you'll just come, and you'll just have the, uh, the insert with the nut on, and there'll be no propeller on. So it is something to think about. It doesn't happen very often. It's a very occasional thing, but it's something to think about. And you can normally telltale see rust signs or it feels odd there'll be a lot of vibration so it's it's not something that happens and just goes so one of the things you should do when you're on the hard this is with the older style is um grab a hold of the prop when the, when it's in gear and it should it shouldn't move obviously this isn't together but it shouldn't move if and you can see on this one if and i have had one of these quite badly fail recently uh, a very old you can see that if there's no rubber system in here it'll move and it'll also move actually and you get some rotation so when you're on the hard if you can physically move it or move it this way and this, it feels like the the nuts loose then it's time to have a look at the dowels and I would strongly encourage you to to get in touch and um, get a quote on how we can replace these for you it's a very straightforward process uh, it takes about 20 minutes it's not expensive uh, you could just send it to the hub and we can replace the interiors and get it serviced for you. Um, or if it's part of an autoprop, we, we do the part of the autoprop service when we rebuild the blades and, uh, and do all the other painting and all the other things we can offer. So that's a quick overview of the sail drives. We have a, a very old system with a rubber in. You can recognize this one. Um, this is typically autoprop, a very flat plate with two screws. Once you take that off, if you've got this big black boot inside, that's not serviceable anymore. Um, it would be the cost of a new hub. The newer style, again, there's no screws on it. Solid um, steel, or it's going to be the black for the Zytel for less than 40 horsepower. Again, these are starting not to be serviceable. And finally, the newer versions, when you, turn the hub, when you, when you pull the hub off, if you've got three um, cap head bolts, this is all stainless, 316 stainless, with a um, with the with the bearing in here, these are serviceable. If you have a a workshop press, um, you can service them yourselves. Um, it's a little bit difficult to get them apart and going together. I have a two piece system that sits on. We feed everything in with a lid and it squeezes it all together in a I think it's a twelve ton press. That we have. So it is serviceable. Uh, very very straightforward. And that's the sail drive. I think in years to come, the dominance of the sail drive is going to increase because it's easy, it's flexible, and it allows the manufacturers to place things wherever they are. 
and also the power absorption by the sail drives is starting to increase. So we're going to see larger and larger sail drives and larger and larger sail drive hubs. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. My name is Rod Sampson. I'm the US distributor for Brunton's. We're in uh, Virginia Beach. If you like the video, please do click on the link before. Thanks very much.